there is no um, criticism of Islam. I think this, what is this? Yeah. Uh, since Islam is not governments, but why is the less freedom of religion so-called Muslim nations than in other nations? Okay, I think what the person here is saying that this is no uh, criticism of Islam itself, since Islam is not governments. You're right. But why is there less freedom of religion in so-called Muslim? Well, see, look, I'm glad you said so-called Muslim. Because everything rises and falls in human beings. And yes, it is true. It is pr true that in many of the nations where Muslims are, there, there is less human rights, open speech, open government. But there's a reason for that. If you study history, you find out that after Muslim lands were invaded, the invaders set up their own puppet governments. Then they created social conditions that became unbearable to force those Muslims out of their countries, and then they created institutions in their countries to invite those Muslims. And so the Muslims came into the Western countries to benefit from the institutions and to run away from the tyrants that were created by those who invaded their countries. Now, you've got to really follow the history to understand it now. So because there seems to be what you call, or what is called, democracy or hypocrisy, whatever you want to call it, because there appears to be freedom of this and freedom of that, I want you to examine something else. What countries have the highest rate of prostitution in the world? The Muslim countries or the Western countries? What countries have the highest rate of drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and deaths that result from the two? The Muslim countries or the Western countries? What countries have the highest rate of suicide? The Muslim countries or the Western countries? What countries have the highest level of child molestation and pedophilia? The Muslim countries or the Western countries? What countries allow pornography to be blatantly put on television, billboards, subways, magazines, in the public, blatantly. Muslim countries, Western countries. So I ask you, which one of those countries would you consider to be more civilized? You have to answer that question for yourself. I've answered it. I've been to 37 countries. Now, of course, I thank God for the privilege of being an American a Muslim American, because I have the best of two worlds. But Muslim American, not American Muslim. Because by being Muslim, I'm able to avoid most of the minds in the field of America. By being Muslim, I can avoid most of the corruption and the frustration and the disparagement and the immorality and the hypocrisy and the people whose lives are empty. This is by the grace of Almighty God. So I want to say to the person who asked that very nice question that the issue of freedom, don't mistake the issue of oppression by Muslim leaders to be a lack of freedom in terms of the people's spiritual ambition. Still, in the Muslim world, the Adhan is called five times a day, even in the oppressor countries. Still, the people are regulated by the Qur'an. Still, you find that women in the Muslim countries, they're not wearing the veil, and not, they're not covering themselves, and they're not honoring family, and they're not honoring the, the vow of marriage. They're not doing this because they're forced to do so. I'll give you another statistic. Did you know that in the Western countries, between the UK and America, I won't count Australia, just the UK and America, did you know that 516,000 abortions are done every year? 
516,000 children's lives are stamped out because people feel they made a mistake. And it's been approved by the government. That doesn't happen in a Muslim country. Family, family, the word family is still a treasured word in the Muslim countries. Family has become a very abstract terminology in the West. And even male and female has become abstract in the West. Did you know that in the Western countries, uh, two women can get married and adopt children? And did you know that in the Western countries, two men can get married and, ha and adopt children? That doesn't happen in Islam. Now, we won't go into the whole issue, the morality of whether somebody was born with that disposition and whether they got the individual right, so forth and so on, but animals don't do that. <laughs> the question, the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer was teaching, was teaching, not his own prayer. That was the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer was, the people asked Jesus Christ, teach us how to pray. In case the person is writing here, you don't know. They asked Jesus Christ, oh Rabbi, teach us how to pray. And he taught them how to pray. That's called the Lord's Prayer. Now, I'm not an authority on the Bible, but this is your scripture. That's what Jesus was talking this. Not somebody else talking that, Jesus. And as for Paul did not write Revelation, I didn't say he did. The books that Paul wrote are very clear. Nobody knows who wrote Revelation because John is not known himself. John who? And there are different conflicting information as to who is this John. Is it the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Or is it a John of Revelation? Or is it the John who was a disciple of Jesus Christ? Well, I tell you, do your homework and you'll find out that the Bible authorities, the church itself, will tell you that the John of the four Gospels wrote 40 years after Jesus Christ that was not a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's not what I said. That's what the Bible authorities said. But I'll be available, again, in that upper room if you want to talk. A confused Christian. There appears to be difference in interpretation of Islam in many countries. Why is this? There's a, there's a confusion about Mus among Muslims about many things. Because some Muslims are knowledgeable. Some Muslims are regulated. Some Muslims are honest. Some Muslims are decent. Some Muslims are God-fearing. And some Muslims are confused, like some Christians are confused. So Muslims are just human beings. But there's no difference among Muslims about the Qur'an. No Muslims in the world. All Muslims know the Qur'an. If I arbitrarily pick this Muslim, who I never met before I came to Australia, and I picked another Muslim, who I never met from Indonesia, and I picked another Muslim who was from Arabia, and another Muslim from Africa, and another Muslim from Germany, and asked all of them to stand up, and I said, let us all recite from Surah Amma Yat Asa'alun. I'll guarantee you, all of us would begin reciting until the end of that particular surah exactly the same, and we didn't know each other. But the Christians couldn't stand up and do that arbitrarily. You want to make that test? We can make the test. Any book of the Bible, you could not stand up and recite it all together using the same words and end up the same. Because there's 354 different versions of the Bible. And all the different denominations themselves don't agree the amount of verses or the amount of chapters or where they came from. Why is there not a united gathering of leaders to address the above? Unity is up to God. God puts inspiration in the hearts of people. It's not people who make that determination. I want